Thanks so much for tuning in and joining me this afternoon. We have Stefano Grande, the CEO and president of the Children's Hospital Foundation of Manitoba. Did I get that all correct there, you Stefano? You sure did, and thank you so much. Absolutely. It's great to have you. So uh, what has the foundation recently announced about the picnic, the teddy bears picnic and the book market? We'd love to know. Well, unfortunately, we've had to announce again for three years in a row that the Children's Hospital book market and the Tidverse picnic remain on hold due to COVID-19. Uh, we expect to uh, be able to provide further updates on community events in the, in the coming months. But it's just uh, one of those one of those slowly, uh, you know, stories that we hope we can unpack next year that uh, our book market has arrived and our Teddy Bears picnic is alive and well. Absolutely. Okay. So looking for things in the future. Um, yeah. Was it like when I think about reopening, things are loosening. Is it, is it just too soon then for all of this? Is it the size of crowd? Like, was there kind of a defining thing? Yeah, I think, you know, our, our, you know, our Care Bears picnic happens in May and, and we know, uh, we know where our community is slowly emerging out of this last uh, Omicron virus. And, we just we're not sure how the community was going to react. Uh, we don't we weren't sure uh, in terms of this last phase and, and the re reopening. You know how is you know how is the community feeling in terms of health and safety and and so it's it's in the best interest for us to really put on hold the teddy bears picnic and and rethink it and come out stronger and bigger in 2023. It, it made sense for us. And of course, uh, you know, as our malls are reopening, um, you know, as our community is reintegrating back into what's normal, uh, you know, we wanted to be sure that uh, the teddy bears, uh, sorry, the um, the book market uh, comes back strong as well. And and so we're hoping that uh, our our book market organizers, uh, who you know, who just do an incredible job, uh, historically have raised three to five hundred thousand dollars every year for our foundation, will come back this fall when things are a little bit more normal, a little bit more certain. Keeping in mind that the hundreds of volunteers that help us for our book market are our older people, the most vulnerable. Uh, they're seniors who come out and, you know, engage the public uh, and help uh, help explain the, the varieties of the books that are for sale. And without them, uh, we wouldn't be able to accomplish what, what we do for our hospital. So again, being a little bit cautious, just really understanding the layout of our community in the next uh, six to 12 months. Yeah, absolutely. When I think about how big, like how much money you guys raise for the Teddy Bears Picnic, and the book market, how big they are. Like these aren't small events either, right? So they're, I, I have to assume it takes more than a week to plan something to this magnitude, right? Yeah, and you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, in addition to the wonderful, uh, the wonderful dollars that are raised for our hospital. It's just a great way for our, our hospital and our research institute just to engage the community bring them face to face with the, the, the uh, you know, the hospital employees, the doctors, the nurses, the researchers. And the other thing that's on top of our mind as well is how our health system is, is really exhausted right now too. And, and uh, you know, our doctors and nurses and, and the allied uh, medical staff that, uh, that run our hospital, uh, they've been with us uh, for three years working double duty and, and, you know, their, you know, their health is also on our minds as well. Uh, and so we're hoping, you know, for the teddy bears picnic, uh, let's think about what it could look like for 2023. And, and by then, uh, we'll be all ready to go, uh, inviting the community to come come back down and uh, and do some of the things that they are really appreciative, like our, our Dr. Goodberg clinic and the mash tent and just walking around and getting engaged, you know, you know, in, in, in a community sense of way. Yeah, that makes sense. Is there any events at all happening in their place, something online, or are you guys like, see you in 2023? Well, one of the, you know, one of the things that uh, is really important to our organization is uh, the number of events, the hundreds of events that take place every single year through the generosity of the community itself. And, and so the backyard barbecues, the lemonade stands, the, uh, the golfing events that are staged by corporate players, uh, all these things are starting to come back, and uh, which is a huge, huge area of support for our hospital. Over, 
$1.5 million a year is raised by these third party events. And, you know, the fishing events uh, just north of Selkirk uh, are, are some of the good examples. Some of those some of those events have been occurring virtually over over, you know, over over Zoom over the last two or three years. And and we're getting a sense that the community is getting ready to go out and and do those physical interactive points as well. And so what I'm going to do is just in, in, invite your your audience to come and look at our Web page and take a look at some of those events that are occurring every week, every month, uh, and more and more in the months to come as our community gets back to normal. Yeah, we just, I just spoke with a family two weeks ago, incredible family. They finally got a kidney transplant for their two-year-old precious little girl. The dad yes. was able to transplant, yeah. And uh, her grandfather's doing a big bike thing and raising a ton of money uh, as well. So like, yeah, for the children's hospital, which yeah, love that. Right on. And, and those are those third party events, just families and individuals and corporations that want to do something to improve the, the health of sick and injured kids. And, you know, I've been to a few of them, particularly the bake sales, you know, that are run out of the community centers. Those are coming back and I'm looking forward to those. I'm telling you. <laughs> so delicious, right? Yeah, like it's a win win. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I would love to know if you don't mind opening a picture up a little bit for us. Where does this money that you guys raise, does it go always towards one area? Is it a couple specific things that, you know, the foundation is looking at that year? Yeah, they, these events are really important to our organization because they fund uh, two of the biggest areas of need every single year. The first and foremost, you know, the research that goes on here, uh, over $4 million a year is raised every single year to to help facilitate, you know, finding cures to those diseases which, uh, which you know, plague our kids in our, in our province. And we have over 250 re researchers and dozens upon dozens of research that goes on uh, in this institute. Two floors, 40,000 square feet, state-of-the-art facilities, 100% funded by our donor community and um, and our child, uh, our, our child life program. Uh, if you think of the kids that are staying in our hospital right now, some are here for a few days and some here are here, unfortunately, for a few weeks. And how do we keep them engaged in the, normal, the normalcy of a children's uh, life? Uh, and so we raise uh, dollars for important programs like musical therapy programs and library programs. And there's just an incredible play space on the third floor of the Children's Hospital. Uh, that's got everything from electronics to foosball to you name it, games, and uh, that keep keeps kids' minds occupied and their, and their mental health as best as uh, as best as possible. We have an incredible number of child life specialists that just deliver programs every single day uh, for those kids that have those unfortunate extended stays because of medical procedures that they're that they're going through. And we also have uh, an in-house television program that kids can participate and get engaged and be part of. And, and so these are all the therapeutic programs that are driven by the generosity of our community every single year. And those are two of the big ones that we continue to, to fundraise for, uh, despite the challenges that we've seen. Absolutely. Um, if somebody's thinking, oh my goodness, they can't have the picnic, they can't do the book market, I want to donate anyway, how can they do that? Go to our webpage, goodbear.ca. Uh, really good information in terms of what we need the dollars for, you know, uh, and the immediate impact too that uh, that results from the generosity of our community. Best place uh, to make a donation and learn more about uh, the importance of our children's hospital, the importance of our research institute in our province, and you know, uh, we have some world-class doctors and researchers here, and our, our goal is to uh, help them and equip them with the best equipment, the best technology, the best spaces, the best research for our kids, because our kids deserve that much, much more in our province and beyond. Absolutely. Is there anything else that you want to add that I may have missed? I think you covered everything very well. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Stefano, for being here and for sharing this with us this afternoon. We will direct people to the goodbear.ca page as well. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Absolutely. And all the best.